Today we're going to talk about carrying these on this. Carrying around spare tires on your adventure motorcycle. Now for different reasons you might be carrying one, or if you're lucky like me, two spare tires for an interminable amount of time. Maybe say a thousand miles, two thousand miles, who knows. In this case, uh, this back tire on here is almost worn out and I'm headed from uh, the flat paved regions of Brazil up into the Amazon. We're going to need these. Unfortunately here in Brazil, the price of tires is probably two or three times neighboring countries. So I actually drove back to Paraguay to pick up these bad boys and then haul them with me until I get there. And I'll swap them out for these more rotor into tires that are going to be bald pretty much by the time we get there. For different reasons, maybe you're headed out into the back country for a weekend or something. It's paved most of the way, but you're going to be doing a lot of off-roading. You can just switch them out before you go into the back roads then switch them back again. Price could be a common factor too. Um, availability, I knocked on pretty much all of those in one foul swoop here. So we're going to go through some different options. One's going to be putting on the back of your bike and another one's going to be putting on the front. So first off, we're going to start off with putting them on the back of your bike. Depending on how you're set up, your box might be smaller than the circumference of this. So this is a 17 inch tire. If you have a small box in the back that's say like 16 inches or something, you might be able to put this over the top of it and it'll balance quite nicely. Or in this case, this is a 21 inch tire. If you have something smaller than that, you can probably just slide it over the top and put it nicely on the 21 inch or smaller space. What I found seems to work the best is at different points, I carried a tire like this on the back of the bike, which will slide around and get a little bit loose and tend to wiggle off a little bit. So, what I decided would work better is if you put it at a bit of an angle, say maybe like this or like this, it'll work out pretty good. And if you have two tires, you can put the bigger one on the bottom and the smaller round one on the top. Still carrying it the same direction at a bit of an angle. One of the best options I've found is to use one of these tie straps as long as maybe some bungee cords. You can use just bungee cords too, but these seem to lock it in better, a, lot, a lot better. Seems to lock it in place a lot better. They fold down really nice. They can fit in your cargo quite easily when you're not using them. And it's pretty simple to just pull them out, undo them, and then run them around your bike. What I find works the best is if you run the, the underneath the set of tires first and then back across so that when it pulls up, it's pulling kind of up against the tires and this is giving resistance. What doesn't work that great, I found, is that if you attach it to something exterior to where this is mounted on, this is going to flex a little bit because it's mounted to the top where the top case of the bike goes, but if you cinch it onto a separate area, then when they don't flex evenly, it'll start to bend and twist and actually broke the mounting bolts hold together one time by doing this improperly. So it usually works better if you just mount it to something on the box. Usually they have handles or some sort of um, design place to attach goods to. It usually works one of the best ways. So from there, mount the two tires, get it nice and snug, bring this around, Decide if you want to hang over the back corner or the front corner a bit. I have a preference to this front corner like this so that I can see if it's actually falling off or not. And then from there we'll do the same thing where we'll run it down through the top like this. Suck up our slack quite a bit here. Over the top, hook it back onto one of your handles here, it's attached to the bike. And then mount it into place. Now one thing that might happen if you do like this, and it moves quite a bit on the back, is you're going to get some wear points on here. So what I'd also like to point out is if we undo this, and I already have on here, this is just an old t-shirt that I had kicking around. Uh, you could use cloth, you could use whatever you want to, but this happens to be a t-shirt I put around. So if you consider some wear points on here, and you want to make sure that you don't get any rub marks on the inside of your tire that might, uh, might not help with it beating properly later, you can just run it across the wear points like this. Go 
lock into place that way. That's it. You got a bit of extra cord at the back here, or a bit of extra rope, whatever, at the back here. With that, I usually like to just make sure that I have maybe an extra spot mounted on the bike. You can run it through. I have this extra handle here. Take it like that. Tie it around. And tie it into place. So that's not going to go anywhere. As an added bit of security, if you're really worried about where you're going and where you're staying, I have this helmet lock that so I usually lock my bike on my helmet with. But same thing, you can just run it through here. And then I mount it to the back of the box like this. That way, it kind of fears theft from sort of coming your direction. And Another one of the reasons you might be carrying your spare around is because if you're like this, this tire is just about worn out. And I've probably got, I don't know, let's say 600 miles of highway left to go before I hit dirt. So I'm going to change to this. So if you're going somewhere where it's going to be the extremes, extreme on the highway and extreme in the mud and dirt, uh, particularly I'm headed to the Amazon, so it's definitely going to be the extremes. It goes paved and then it runs out, it turns to mud and dirt. So I'm going to need one of these tires for sure. So it's not always possible to use a 66 or 60-40 or a 50-50 tire or something like that. You might need to use the two extremes of an off-road and on-road tire. In this case, this tire is almost done for entirely. Let's see if we can get really close there. And will require a replacement sooner rather than later. All right, in this case I'm carrying two tires, so I'm going to go through and point out how to carry them on the front opposed to the back. The front's my more preferred method because it makes the bike, the bike feel more balanced opposed to the back where there's already so much weight on the back of this bike because I'm carrying around so much cargo that the bike's already pretty back heavy. So once I put this on the front, it does make it feel a lot better. And the fact that I have two is nice because it sort of balances out both sides of the bike. Or if I just had one, I would probably actually put it on this side of the bike because I'm personally carrying more weight on the other side. I have tools and gasoline and all kinds of stuff on this side of the bike. So we'll start off like this. So for this case, we're going to mount a tire up at the front here. So. One of the main points is you have to have somewhere to put it. So in this case, I happen to have some crash bars here with an extra foot peg, so this works out great for me. If, say, these back boxes were really small, like ammo cans or something like that, and I could fit them inside of here, it might actually work better for me just to put them over top of the ammo cans or whatever I have on the back and cinch them down that way. But in this case, I have the option of hanging them on the front here without really ruining anything or getting in the way. So I'm going to actually map these on the front, sort of like this. For this, this is a great day for a video too. I think it's probably the humidity has got to be in, I don't know, the 90s somewhere. The temperature is well up into the hundreds and it's only probably 11 o'clock or 10 30 in the morning right now. Anyways, for these we're going to use uh, some tie straps and probably mix in a bungee cord too with the bigger tire. So these are great. They fold up really small, keep things in place. So you can pick them up almost anywhere. Uh, so away we go. So a few things you want to consider here is what I have this thing right now, it's going to hit the front tire when I turn. So keeping in mind before you're getting all tied down, you're going to want this as high as you probably can get it away from, as well as almost as forward as you can, because you're not going to want it to hit the tire when you're turning or your knees when you're riding. So we're actually going to mount it from the bottom towards the front here and try and watch out for this light because we're going to probably want someone to see us signaling. That being said, I'm pretty sure on the other side that's not going to be possible, but we're going to do our best for this side. Another thing to point out is that it's not such a big deal on the front because the tire doesn't move as much, but if you're worried about rub marks or wear on the inside, you can just take a piece of cloth or an old t-shirt and mount it somewhere wherever your pinpoints are, or sorry, your pinch points are going to be on the tire here. I had this on the back originally, and that's what I had these on for, but now that they're on the front, it's not as big a deal, so I'm not going to go and put three or four of them on here because it's not, it doesn't really interest me that much. All right, so now we're going to mount the front here. So things to keep in mind is you want enough clearance, it's not going to rub on the front tire. You want enough clearance here, and it's not going to rub on your knees because one's going to be annoying, one's going to be dangerous. I'm going to look for a point first off where we can mount it uh, super stable. So I picked the top part here. And that's where I can start from. So I can make sure that this part where we get going is nice and tight in there. I'll wrap it around once. And I'm probably going to try and get it from three angles here so it keeps it as stable as possible. So first off, just so you can see, I'll run it back down through here. And then we'll take, and we don't want to make this stable, so I'll just take and run it behind this. Let's give it sort of as much of a direct straight across point as possible. So we 
great part about knobbies is it gives you something to hook on to. So in this case, we'll take it here. So we have a point from the top, which is nice and tight. Before we get too tight there, we're going to get a point from the back, which is nice and tight too. That's it. So it's not going to rub against my knees here. It's not going to rub against the tire here. I'll just double check that. Put my leg over here. Put it in place. We got lots of room. If at any point I want to make it more snug, I can just tie it down like that. For the most part, though, it's sitting on top of this, so it should be pretty stable. Everything else is mounted nicely in place. That's it. We have one tire mounted to the front. Let's bring it in for a look here so you know what I mean about the front. But we want to make sure there's enough clearance there so no matter how much we crank the tire, if we're going ahead or if we have to go back for some reason, that it's not going to rub at all because that could be catastrophic. As you can see here, we have uh, one point here, one point there, and one point there. So it keeps it as stable as possible. Sorry, I'll move it back a little bit. So we have one main point here that's nice and tight, one main point here that's nice and tight, and then this part here just so it keeps it nice and stable. The bottom, we're not going to get four spots unless you're pretty artsy, but that, my friends, is pretty balanced. Okay, for the last one, we're going to mount it on here. Some things we're going to want to watch out for is the gear shifter, our knees, rubbing on the tire, and maybe a headlight. In this case, I know for sure it's going to go in front of my headlight because I've already had it on the bike once. And the headlight's been broken about five, or the headlight, sorry, the student light's been broken about five times now, so I'm not too concerned about it, but if you can avoid it, probably the better and probably the more safe. In this case, I can't and I don't really care. So. There. So it's in there like that. And then I'm going to find another stability point, which is going to be this one right here. And try to make sure you have it as snug as possible the whole time. Take and use the knobbies. And I'll go around here. And around there. And then to give it some more stability, I'm going to take and I'll run to the front here, like so. So that this and this should be pulling on each other, which is kind of nice. Hopefully you can see that. So I've got one contact here, another contact here. I know already the top's going to be loose. But I'm not too worried about it because I have a plan for that too. You take like so. I'm going to run this like this. And then if I can get to there, all the better, because then it's not going to rub on the bike anywhere. Make sure these are nice and even. Let's just stitch into place. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to compress it or bend it too much or anything like that, but I do know that this one is going to sway a little bit, uh, which is totally fine. I want it to be stable here and stable here. And for the last little bit, all I'm going to do you can mount it with more things if you want to, but personally, I'll just take and run that inside of there, and this on there. It's just going to keep it sort of balanced in place like that. That way it's nice and secure. It doesn't wobble so much going on the highway. Check. It's not going to rub on my, on my uh, tire right there. It's not going to rub on my knee right here. It's tucked in behind it. And it's not going to rub on the gear shifter there so I can shift comfortably. All in all, pretty smooth setup. Now my friends, it's all about how to mount motorcycle tires to your adventure bike when traveling. 
In my case, I put two on the front. It seems to work better than when I put two in the back. If you only have one, I'd offset the weight a bit on the front. In my case, it would be that side is where I want the weight because this side has more weight. I have tools and fuel on this side. If you have one in the back only, make sure it's at an angle, not flat, because eventually it'll slide away. And two at the front, make sure they're mounted far enough ahead that it's away from your knees, but not touching the tire and up enough off the ground that it's not going to affect your shifting or your brake at all. Thanks for watching. And if you're doing this at home, I'm going to recommend picking a shady day or doing it inside your garage because it is hot out here. Woo! Thanks for watching.